Wives should be at home and take care of their family. That's the sole responsibility. We have a family of very high moral values. Bahus of our khandan don't go out to work. These are some of the very common phrases that establish that Indian society is not for women. A girl cannot grow into her ambitions and will be subdued by the male members of the society of the family. India, of course, is a patriarchal society where married women are forced to live behind ghunghats for the entire life. What I said just now is something that some of us might have experienced or seen or may have heard of, maybe watched in films. The follow-up to this is due to influence of the West, the situation is changing and women, be it married or unmarried, are today out there earning for themselves, breaking the shackles of patriarchy. But has Indian society always been like this? Does all that our civilization teach is to pass jokes on wives on social messaging platforms? Has the Western influence really helped married women in India break the shackles and go out and work and earn their independence? Or does the transition story have some lesser known less to it? Hi and welcome to TFI Post. I'm your host Atul Mishra. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. If you're watching us on Facebook, consider liking the post and sharing and subscribing to the page. Let's begin with the video report. In contrast to the popularized theory of patriarchal India, the position of girls, women, wives was always acknowledged in Sanatan Hindu society. They were always given the due respect they deserved. Young girls were educated. They gained knowledge on everything from Artha Shastra to Shastra Vidya. They were also provided with military training, the reason why many Hindu wives went to war with their husbands and some even fought without them. These young women had exclusive right to select their own consorts, which was known as Swayamvar, and the concept of dowry didn't even exist. These well-educated girls became wives and not only nurtured families but also governed states. And it was not limited to this. The wives held the responsibility of mentoring. They used to guide men on religious and social questions. The wives in ancient Indian societies also had a crucial role to play in the decision-making process. Stay as I present some quotes to you. Nasti stri sama chaya nasti stri sama gati nasti stri sama tranam. Who is a wife? This quote credits woman as a shadow and woman as the shelter. Shelter that protects you and shadow that guides you. One will go directionless if they lose their shadow. Karyeshu mantri, karaneshu dasi, bhojeshu mata, shayaneshu rambha, dharmanukula, kshamaya dharitri, bharyacha, shadagunya vateha durlabha. What does this Sanskrit shlok mean? This Vedic shlok depicts the six qualities that should be in a woman. A wife is someone who can advise like an intelligent minister, who is a workaholic and takes care of the family, feeds like a mother and loves like apsaras or nymphs, is forgiving like Mother Earth and is beautiful like Goddess Lakshmi. These were the ideal qualities that defined wives, establishing their high stature and significant role in shaping the society. The men were also directed to respect their wives who held the position of Ardhangini in Sanatan Dharma. Santosh Strishu Kartavya Swadare Bhojane Dhane Trishu Chaiva Na Kartavyo Dhene Japadanayo. The respect for Hindu wives and their stature in the family as well as the society was such that even Bhagwans waged wars to avenge the ill treatment of their wives. Bhagwan Shiv, the strongest among Trudev, crossed all boundaries forgetting his duties to bring justice to Sati, who had sacrificed her life. In anger, Bhagwan Shiv began his dance of destruction, Tandav, and the universe could only be saved from his rage after the combined interference of Bhagwan Brahma and Bhagwan Vishnu. Bhagwan Ram fought with Ravan in order to protect the dignity of his wife. In the Yuddhakan, Maharshi Valmiki elaborates how Bhagwan Ram, battling all the hardships he faced, waged a war against Ravan to ensure the safety and dignity of his wife Mata Sita. The next epic is Mahabharata, where the Pandavas avenged the disrespect of their wife Draupadi. The Pratigya of Bhim stands in deposition for the same. From Devi's being worshipped to giving wives the utmost respect, the ancient Indian society is a case study for the world to learn gender equality. 
And the two prominent examples to be cited are that of Mata Sita and Draupadi. Have you heard the chants in a Hindu mandir? We call for Bolo Siyavara Ramachandra Ki Jai. This chant is enough to explain the stature of wives in the Sanatan Dharma. Maharshi Valmiki says in his magnum opus Ramayana, Tatahasa Prayato Vriddho Vasishto Brahmana Saha Raman Ratna Mayo Pite Saha Sitam Naya Veshyat. This translates to the elderly Vashisht with diligence along with other Brahmins on his side prevailed upon Sri Ram duly to occupy along with Sita on a seat made of precious stones. Through this, he asks Maryada Purushottam Sri Ram to take the chair of Ayodhya along with Mata Sita. This clearly signifies that wives enjoyed equal stay in governing the state. This is why the wives were called Vamangini or Ardhangini or Sahdharmini. Wives were not who followed the orders of the male members or husbands. Rather, in Sanatan Dharma, they were Sahyogini or Sahakarmini who shared an equal part in all actions performed by her partner. Vishapala mentioned in Rig Veda is a well-known warrior. She is known for fighting with one natural and one artificial leg. Similarly, Kyaike, one of the mothers of the four celebrated brothers in Ramayana, fought shoulder to shoulder with Raja Dasrat, her husband. There are several other such stories present in our culture. Recent history has witnessed warrior queens like Rani Lakshmi Bai and Ahilya Bai Holkar as the prominent examples. It was in the 800s when Abrahamic invasions began and first Afghans, then Mughals, then Britishers, a series of foreign invasions happened. The invaders came to India, looted the land known as the Golden Sparrow, raped and kidnapped women and turned men into their slaves. The Mughal rule impacted the life of Hindu wives the most. While the other Islamic invaders came, looted and went back, Mughal stayed and ruled India for longer than 300 years. It was at that time that the stature and involvement of women in social and public affairs changed entirely. The Hindu wives who were getting training of Shastra and Shastra were confined within the four walls. During the Mughal era, it was a common practice for senior officials or the emperors to lay eyes upon any woman and take her into his harem. During the wedding season, such actions turned into a recurring nightmares. Bridal party raids became common at the time and something had to be done to overcome this. So to protect the daughters and wives, two major changes were implemented. First, marriages were now organized in wee hours instead of daytime. And second, the concept of parda or ghungat was adopted to seclude and veil women from the lustful eyes of the Mughals. With attire, the treatment of women also changed. The Mughals were defeated by the British but Ghungat and seclusion of women became a norm. This drastically diminished the stature of wives. This was a time when objectification of women became normal. India is a country that was not only robbed of its wealth but also of its culture. The advocates of Burka imposed Parda on Hindu wives. Women belonging to the not-to-do-well family started staying behind the four walls. They were deprived of education and were limited to baby producing machines as imposed by Islamic invaders and Victorian grace advocating British. Similar things continued in British India as well as independent India till say 1980s. However, with independence began the debate of regaining our lost glory. Girls were now being sent to school and wives slowly started participating in societal affairs. Their presence was slowly becoming visible in the Hindu homes as well. Then came economic liberalization that paved the way for women to go out and work. The demand for workforce increased as our economy shifted from being a static one to an extremely dynamic one. Majorly, only Hindu wives made foray into the labor market as women in other religions are still subdued by the patriarchal forces. The generation of 1980s and 1990s is the most aspirational generation who are currently sitting at directorial level ventures around the globe. The Hindu wives who fought wars were now part of the workforces, earning livelihood and complementing other earning members of the family. The stature of Hindu wives and mothers again grew with education and exposure and they were once again the part of the decision-making body. 
It is true that a large number of people still need to be told about the rich civilizational history of India. Women's role in the Sanatan civilization can be summed up in one line. In Sanatan civilization, Hindu wives from a larger perspective had the roles of queens, mothers, teachers, preachers, warriors and ministers. But they were not coerced into performing a specific role. And now Hindu wives are again gaining the position they had in the past and that they rightfully deserve.